Hello, uh, welcome to Tutorial 2. Uh, we're going to look at mixing um, a sound. Uh, we're just going to do stereo, uh, but this can be easily extended to um, four channels um, or more. Um, so, with the last, le uh, not lecture, um, <laughs> the last uh, tutorial, we just simply routed the current sample in the buffer um, to both channels equally but what if we wanted just the left channel to output sound? Uh, well, if we wanted to do that we could just have the left channel simply outputting sound and the right channel not, but what if it was 70-30 um, or 60-40 in terms of ratio of left to right? We can use something called, um, well, it's it's in the OFX library and it's called MaxiMix and it will just do all the routing for us. So, without further ado, let's begin. Um, so, include some money, include OFX Maxim, H. Uh, let's make a wave. So maxi os OSC. Here's our mixer, so maxi mix mix. Um, we gonna it's gonna be pretty simple similar to the last tutorial, so we'll keep things fairly straightforward. So let's do frequency and current sample. Um, we will uh, need an unsigned buffer Ugh. Hmm. Uh, unsigned um, buffer size and sample rate We need to include our audio out callback function. Cool. Let's just copy that. Let's define that in our loop. So void of app keep our needs. Okay, in setup we need to um, need to set the sample rate. Hey, if this is confusing to you, check out the first tutorial. Uh, I covered that a bit briefly. We can always Google it. Um, buffer size. Just disable f.lux. Apologies. Um, that's better. Uh, let's do 5.12. Um, set my background. Black, uh, set up sound stream or the DAC. With sound stream set up, that needs to be uh, two outputs, zero inputs. This um, sample rate, buffer size, and four buffers. Um, and initialize our frequency. So now it's 220 this time, although it won't make any odds because we'll be making it change with our mouse. Um, so now we need to loop through the buffer. Grabbing each 
frame as we go and doing something with it. Um, we need to get our current sample. Let's use a sine wave this time. And that again takes a frequency, which is a double argument. It outputs here uh, a double. And then what we'll do is we'll use our maxi mixer object mix um, to and it will take an input and we will route um, an output into it as well. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little double array size 2 for our outputs. So not to be confused with our floats buffer. Okay. So if we go we'll do max sorry mix dot um, stereo and that takes uh, input so that's our current sample takes the output, which is output, um, and it takes a value between 0 and 1, and that's for how much on the left we want, so 0 is left, um, and completely left, and 1 is completely right. So for now, let's, well, we could say, we could do that, and you could probably correctly assume that that's going to be more on the right side. Uh, more in the right channel, but to really show this off, to learn a bit more about digital signal processing, know that we can get creative um, and we don't have to use straight values. We could actually use another sine wave, um, a low frequency oscillator. So, what I will do is I will set up another oscillator called Pana. Um, and this will go as our last argument. So, pana dot uh, sine wave and frequency. Uh, no, we'll just give it a slow pan. So, let's do one. Um, and yes, okay, cool. So. Sine waves return a value between minus 1 and 1 and what we need to do is convert that into a value um, between 0 and 1 because that's the range we're using. We could use the OF map but um, I think it's probably a bit too greedy to be just using that when we could quite easily just add 1 to the value of the wave. So now it's going between uh, 0 and 2 and then just divide it by 2. Now it's between in the range that we can use. Um, okay, cool. And that's that sorted. So currently it's all being routed to our outputs array. And then it's super straightforward. Uh, we just get the current index of our output um, buffer. So i times number of channels and then we equal that to output left or zero and output that's plus one and that's one um, cool uh, so for the rest we could map frequency to the mouse, but I think this time what we can do is we can make frequency move up and down itself by also using Pana. In fact, let's make let's make a different wave. So this is sort of frequency modulation. 
actually, although we'll get to that and we'll do some cooler stuff than this soon. But sine wave. Let's make that. So let's make that resonate, um, or let's make the fundamental frequency up here. Let's make it that, so that's frequency, so it's 220 plus uh, minus that. Cool. Let's give that a whirl. See how that sounds. So we hopefully, we, well, we we should here it go from left to right um, in fact before I run that I'm just going to make it a bit quieter so this is something you can do to make it all a bit quieter because last time I ran it it was very loud so I'm just going to divide it all by 2 let's do times 0.5 and when you have multiple oscillators running together, you need to remember to divide the total current sample by the total amount of buffers that you've got. Also oscillators, not buffers. Uh, so yeah, that should run um, in its own time. Cool. It goes. Don't hold your breath. Awesome. And there we go. Uh, wear some headphones, um, and you'll be able to hear the effect better, or listen to some through monitors or something. But you can hear a slight change in pitch, and, and you can also hear it, hopefully, oscillating between left and right. Great. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a good night, or day, or whatever the time of day it is where you're at.